There we go then, it's time for another Sunday lunch, we're back to a regular 12 o'clock slot and we've got another fantastic guest for you this week and another league winning monarch. I'm John McGilvery. And my name's Liam Rudden, welcome to another Sunday lunch. Uh, we have Theo Piper joining us today, we're looking for your questions. Um, quick uh, chat at the moment to everybody for all the kind comments you made about the show. Uh, John, I don't know if you've been watching them on social media yeah. afterwards. I just realised the other day, but not actually said thank you guys for your support, so thank you for all that. Keep your questions coming in today for Teal, and um, both John and I are monitoring the Facebook as we go through the day. So anything you've always wanted to ask Teal, now is your chance. John. Thanks Liam. Yes, welcome along to 2003 league winning monarch Teal Piper. Teal, brilliant to have you along, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, it's been a long time. Uh, since uh, since the virus is here now, and um, it's good to, to catch up with these things you do now. Bro, well, it's, um, it's I'm actually supposed to be going sofa shopping this afternoon, so if we can do maybe a seven-hour epic interview, mate, that would be brilliant <laughs> uh, if we could. But, but yeah. you know, you're looking brilliant. You're looking well. The beard game is strong. Um, yeah. How have you been coping? How are the family? And how's things been going through lockdown? Yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty weird this year. Um, we had, uh, you know, the kids were off school before uh, the lockdown even started. So, um, and then we had a uh, pretty much five five months at home, you know. So, um, uh, as soon as we were allowed to um, to leave the country, uh, we came uh, to our place in Holland and um, and did a bit of bit of racing. Uh, last weekend we were in uh, Czech Republic, and um, this this weekend come and uh, have the European final in the south of France and. Um, the kids have been racing in the middle of uh, Czech Republic and uh, yeah, as usual, traveling is our life, you know, so um, it's good that we can uh, be on the road. It's very weird to talk to someone in, on these who's actually been racing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, we're talking to guys who are just champing at the bit to get going and, and get a skid on and, and you've been racing. How's that? How's it been at these tracks then doing any racing? I think there's not been any fans. It's, it's been very much in you know, it all spread out obviously apart from natural reasons. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty weird really because normally you shake each other's hand and and all that uh, with the riders uh, especially and now, uh, well, uh, if you have your gloves on you can give them a fist bump, you know, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, and um, everything is cornered off uh, so you have all the, um, your own pits, uh, facilities, they have, um, you know, hand sanitizer everywhere and uh, yeah, masks on, uh, things like that. Uh, in Czech Republic, they were a bit more relaxed. Um, they they didn't have any masks and, and stuff on, but um, I think they should should do it uh, for your own safety as well. I think. You were saying to you that where you are in Holland, there's uh, quite a low um, prevalence of the virus at the moment. But have you noticed on your travels? Has it complicated your travels from country to country? Uh, yes, uh, the, the the countries is it's it's all pretty. Um, weird because uh, in, at home you don't see many cars on the road and, and you know for, for that long time and uh, when we traveled here it, it, you know there were people in the shops and everything and uh, and, and just do normal things and uh, we were quite surprised that that was all allowed if you know what I mean so um, I think um, normally for travel we we try to to stay to ourselves if you know what I mean um, not don't go out to public places and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, of course you need to stop for some some diesel or or you know you need the toilet and stuff like that. But um, try to, to to keep it all to yourself, really. And how, and how difficult has it been with the kids? Because obviously they we've never experienced anything like this before. But neither have they. And obviously they've got boundless energy. So I take it you're, you're sort of like you're trying to school them, you're trying to look after them, and you're trying to teach them a new way as well of doing, you know, not doing what really comes instinctively when they meet their friends and things. Yeah, I, th I think I need to give the wife the compliment for uh, giving them the schooling because. Uh, I, I know how to school a motorbike, but that's all. Yeah. <laughs> He's a clever man, isn't he? He's a yeah. <laughs> well done. But, uh, no, they, for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, kid, the kids are absolutely, uh, they've been fantastic, really. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the little uh, bo little Boney D, um, they used, I think, a whole uh, pot of sand, uh, hand sanitizer to wash your Barbie so they didn't get coronavirus. So uh, <laughs> I think, yeah, they, they, they kind of understand what the what the what the whole situation is and 
up here they're they're pretty uh, pretty relaxed as well because they they can be in the forest and uh, they have their own space here so they can do what they want. Good. It's good, it's good to hear the families all well. Too. Yeah. Um, obviously there was an announcement that there won't be any racing in the Premiership and the Championship in the UK um, this season. Probably didn't come as a surprise to anyone now that we've got to this kind of stage of the summer. We know how, uh, and you'll know as well as anyone, how unpredictable the Scottish summer um, can be. What must yeah. be going through riders' minds then in terms of, did they write the year off? Or did they try and get a skid somewhere? I know guys have been going to Somerset, Leicester, that sort of thing. Yeah. If you were in their shoes, what would be going through your head? Um, you know, it, it's it's pretty hard because uh, um, a lot of riders, uh, it, especially if they come from foreign countries, uh, they they uh, they don't work in the UK. They they work as a speedway rider, and uh, if you don't get any income and you're already been here, um, uh, yeah, it's it's really hard because I saw a few guys now they have a a good job, and they say they they put the speedway aside because they don't want to have the pressure. They get money every every four weeks, if you know what I mean. So, so for a lot of riders, um, it, it's really hard. And and the the guys who can race and, and earn a little bit of money, they uh, they are happy, of course, as well because uh, they've not been on the bike for four four yeah uh, four to five months, you know. So it, it's really hard, and it's a it's a hard situation. But who says it's going to go all away? If you know what I mean. So it could be it could be here for another year. I, I think so. I was actually listening to to off the ball yesterday, and they spoke to Jason Leach, um, who said that you know vaccinations we could be in the next year and all that sort of stuff. And you start to think this isn't life isn't going to go back to normal anywhere near as quickly mm. as um, as any of us have hoped. And with that in mind, then you know. Do you feel that's the correct decision that's been made that we'll, we'll call the leagues this year and, and we'll try again next year? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think uh, there's there's no no point rushing it in and get a lot of crowd and and you know have have people get sick if you know what I mean. So uh, that's the same with this um, the the FIM and the AUM uh, for the European and the World Championship. This still go to say there are about five thousand people. I think it's ridiculous if you know what I mean. So. Uh, this weekend coming in France, uh, they they should have just said, you know, we call it a day this year. There's no race, and, and we'll try again next year. But if, yeah. if 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 you're signed up for these things, you know, if I if I say now uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm not gonna go, you know, I, first of all I get a big fine because I'm not going. Yeah. And then and then they won't ask you again for next year. Sorry, I knew you were going to ask something earlier, but just jump in financially then, and obviously we don't want to play too much, but. If you then say, look, I'm calling it for a year, is there then an issue where you say, well, look, then, then I don't have an income? Yeah, yeah, or, definitely. Or do you need to just keep racing when the opportunity arises? Yeah, I only I only race. So my income is from the racing, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have a family to look after, a house where I live in, and, and you know, uh, every, every, every day you need to eat. So it is a financial struggle, yes, of course. Um, it's uh, that's why we're now traveling abroad to to do get something for you know the winter time and and stuff like that. But um, no, probably when uh, when we go back, I'll I'll have to look for uh, something normal to do instead of racing a bike. We were we were saying earlier that you're probably one of the the only riders we've spoken to this year who has managed to be racing, and that yeah. takes us to our first question from Dave Harley, who asks how many miles a year. Does Piper Racing travel? Uh, it depends if it's on the road, per plane, or per, <laughs> you know, on the bike. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I think on the road, about 40, 40 to 50,000 miles, I would say. Um, and then you have your air miles as well. And, so, and are you uh, traveling every weekend, too? Because I know it's taken us a couple of week to, weeks to actually get you on the show, but simply because you've been so busy. Yeah. Uh, well, since since we left home uh, in Scotland, um, we were uh, I think we already done six thousand miles so far. So that's only uh, well uh, three weeks. That was in three weeks. So that's uh, that's quite a few mileage uh, already. And of course, uh, the di the diesel is uh, is a little bit cheaper, so that helps. <laughs> I, think I, did, I think I did about six miles in about three months when lockdown was on. So you're uh, you're well ahead of us, Kyle. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. David Smith says, only, yeah. um, not, not a question, Teo. 
but you're a star of Speedway and a Monarchs legend. So it's good to know that you're still well thought of um, amongst Monarchs fans and there's, there's a fair few uh, comments coming in. Absolutely, and, uh, that's, that's fantastic. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll start with David Harley, who kind of takes us to where we want to go when you start with the Monarchs as well. Did you imagine when you first arrived at Armadale back in 2002 that you'd still have such strong contact with the club and the area? Uh, I've been a long time in Edinburgh and it, it kept me there really because it, it's such a nice city, uh, the, the, the people are very nice and um, yeah, no, uh, and of course uh, I was delighted when the boys got to ride there too, you know, because this is where I started. Um, yeah, uh, and, and even uh, when I wasn't racing, we, we visit Armadale, if you know what I mean, so um, it's always good to keep in, in contact with people. Um, because the the people who used to help me with racing, they are helping my boys now a little bit, you know. So it, it's it's um, it's very good from the fans to keep and see what comes after old guy like me, you know, young young children who race too. <laughs> you're only a year older than me, Theo, and you're telling old guys like me, come on, let's yeah, well, keep I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm forty now, so um, yeah, the time time takes on. It does. I tell you, you're both, you're both youngsters compared with me. <laughs> um, <laughs> let, let's go right back to the start, though, Theo. How did you get involved uh, in racing? What, what, what's the start of your story? Um, well, that's a that's that's a, quite a good story because uh, we all know that Blair Scott passed away um, uh, under circumstances, and uh, that that. Um, Many many years ago, I I, I did an un, a, a qualifier in Peterborough, and um, I met Blair and his his dad Ali, uh, and I think they told John Campbell, "There's a young young Dutch boy," and uh, I think two two weeks later, I I was already in the plane to Edinburgh to the, oh, I can't remember what what it was called, the Haggis Neeps and Totties, uh, you know, the dinner. The buns, the buns right. supper, the buns dinner. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, and um, Alec, Alec picked me up uh, from the airport, and uh, I had no clue. I couldn't understand any one of you, <laughs> you know. And uh, I got, I got uh, put on. Um, no, I visited Armadale. I, I went through the gates and had a look at Armadale, and then uh, Alec uh, and John took me to Glasgow, and I got, I think, I got Keith Mabin's bike. And uh, I was allowed to have a shot on the bike, so um, that was uh, that was it. Uh, after that, uh, a week later, I came to to uh, Edinburgh. So, uh, but um, it was uh, Blair's Blair and Blair's dad who who kind of got me there because they they told John he's a he's a good rider. So, brilliant, good story, yeah. and, and you know it just shows you the connect in in Speedway as well, and. Um, so what was your? You say you've walked through the, the doors at Armadale and at Glasgow. What's your first thoughts then when you when you're coming up to Armadale and into Glasgow? Yeah, you know the only uh, only racing I did in, in Holland on a speedway bike. Then uh, there was two tracks, and that's what we we kind of rode, if you know what I mean. And uh, when I came, um, yeah, you you see the 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 GP on the TV, and uh, you know you heard the British Speedway and and all that and yeah of course um, you know um, I was uh, I was still young then I thought I'll give it a shot and then I kind of gave up my life here uh, to go there and um, you know it, it, it worked out uh, pretty good for for me because uh, I'm the only one who kind of kept kept going so long I think especially the people from Holland so, were you, were you surprised, sorry were sorry? you surprised to find in your second year that you were a league winner that must have been quite an introduction, you know, you've done 2002 and then the next year you're at the top of the league. Yeah, the, 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 first, the first year uh, I think I did uh, three meetings and I think it was a meeting against Berwick and Michael Makowski took me off and that, and that was from the start and um, I think I was on the, on the phone crying to my dad, I said I'm, I'm giving up, I'm going home, you know, uh, I didn't earn any money. Uh, you know, I wasn't scoring much points, and uh, and, uh, and my dad said, uh, "You started something." He says, "You need to finish it." So that kind of gave me the spirit. You know, I need to, I need to focus more. I need to be, uh, yeah, kind of tried harder, maybe. You know, and um, 
and then the year after, um, I, th I think it was me and Rory who were, um, I think, the strongest pair on reserve in the league. Um, and uh, home and away, we had five ones all the time, and uh, the reserves were, you know, piling up the points for the team. So, uh, and I, I think uh, that 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 was a good boost for uh, getting the title. Yeah, we, we spoke to Rory and, and a number of people regarding uh, 2003 and, and what it meant to them and the success and how that success came in terms of having the Peter Carls, the Freddie Shorts, the older heads there and the young guys and yourself and Rory. As they've said that blend was, was, was pretty much perfect. Would you agree that having that old head and young enthusiasm is what you need? Yeah, definitely, because you need to have the young crazy kids and you need to have some old experienced who can tell you how to ride, if you know what I mean. So if if I, I saw many videos with user putting on as well with me and Freddie, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, I, I, Freddie lets me ride wherever I want and Freddie will follow, you know. And that's that's what the, the experienced riders kind of do to the youngsters. They don't, they try to lead well, let them go go on the front, and then they'll follow. So um, I think, yeah, that that year was just perfect with Peter Carr and you know Freddie. Uh, they, they were the, the well, two of the best riders uh, in, in in the UK at all. So yeah, yeah, I think they were uh, definitely. And uh, every time I see Freddie now, uh, I don't see Peter much anymore, but uh, I see Freddie every now and then when I'm at Armadale. So uh, and it's still the same same guy what he was then. Drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned your you mentioned you mentioned your dad there too. How encouraging was he? And was there was there speedway? Was there motorbikes in the family before you you started? Uh, there was no motorbikes. Uh, my dad did car racing, uh, uh, and and I, I was I was more when I was a young kid. Uh, I had uh, planks of wood on, onto the car and I was cycling over them all the time and there was a, a little old man who, who came to my dad and said, you need to get this boy a motorbike and that's that's how it, how it kind of went. So, and uh, till the day now, uh, I see this, this little old man all the time. When I have a race, he still comes and watches me. So, if I see if, if, I'm, uh, if I'm in Holland, he'll be definitely there. But do you think when you, when you win that league in 2003, Tail, you've come out the side early, you've won the league, do you go, that's a bit easy, won the league, we've only been here a couple of years, I've won the league already, <laughs> or are you a bit more grounded and say, look, you know, we had a great team, we knew what to do, because we're watching these videos on his EMTV Rewinds, and yeah. you actually forget how good everyone was. You know, yes. you watch yeah. Freddie, Rory, yourself, Peter, and you watch, you go, God, you know, I knew these guys were good. I yeah. forgot just watching just how good they were. Um, yeah. So a bit more grounded that you know, that, yeah, we won the league and it was brilliant, but it's not going to be that easy every year. No, 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 definitely not. You know, um, you know, when 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 there's a team put together and you you, you have your present practice and you meet all the guys and okay, now now we kind of know all the guys, but in the beginning we didn't know anyone, if you know what I mean. So. And um, uh, then it's pretty hard to connect with someone, uh, especially if you get put on a a, a, a hard number. I say if you, if you put on a hard number two, if you know what I mean, and you have to look up to the rider who's 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 with you, the number one, because he's supposed to be the best one in the team. So, um, but now these days, I think uh, you see the teams, uh, and there's not many team riding anymore. There's more like um, you know fighting for your own points, if you know what I mean. Uh, and I think uh, in in the earlier days they had fun after the meeting the guys. Uh, they could you could drink a beer in the pub if you know what I mean. And uh, now it's like a, more a professional, a professional sport. And that's uh, that's I think that took the good bit of speedway away. Yeah. So did you enjoy that more relaxed side of things? We've talked about this. I think we talked about this with Bert Harkins, didn't we? As well, because he rode a long time ago. Um, back yeah. in the 60s and he said you know they all went to the pub after the match they'd be smoking in the pits they'd be all the rest yeah. of it they were you know there was something they did whereas now it's very much everybody's an athlete <laughs> are, you, you ha are you glad that you you had that that introduction to the sport when it was still that bit more relaxed maybe yeah i think if you if you're relaxed um if you're relaxed and uh, and and the racing goes relaxed you you, you also you also ride better 
um, I think now these days uh, there's too much pressure put on the, the younger younger kids and that's how they get injured a lot and um, you know they yeah it's, it's hard to explain I'm trying to do the same with my sons uh, try to let them relax if he, if he gets tense you know he, he's mostly on his backside so if I you know speak to him like in a normal way and then try to, to send him the right way instead of you know pressure all the time mm-hmm. yeah. and we'll, we'll talk about your, your kids a, 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 in a bit Theo because I'm really keen to know um, how it must be for a dad to watch his son someone like you know, who's done it been there won the leagues and, and, and watch his boys but we'll, we'll, we'll kind of come to that um, yeah. a wee bit we wanted to ask some questions from the from the fans we've got um, uh, Gary Dixon here has asked when you decided to move up to the elite full time with Swindon um, yeah. and why do you think that was then why was it, it didn't quite work for the elite league then um, I think uh, the days when I went to the elite league uh, first of Wolverhampton and then to Swindon uh, you, you had to be a heat leader in the Premier League and you couldn't double up. Uh, so you had to make the move or, you know, stay in the Premier League or you had to go to a lead league. Um, uh, in, in Wolverhampton, the first um, the first three months was, was good, uh, you know, and um, uh, it was just that the whole situation around it, it didn't work out for me. And then I, I got a swap back to the Monarchs. You know, and, um, and that was in 2007, and that worked out better for me because that was home for me. Um, you know, uh, yeah, and and uh, the whole the whole situation around it was just better for me. And then uh, the year after, when I moved up to Swindon, I had this nasty accident, and uh, after that, I had a oh, I think a one and a half year break, I think. So that's that was the whole kind of stoppage for me in, in Swindon. Because uh, I got, um, I, I was severely injured. I had a broken collarbone. I had my wrist broken, the jaw broken, and I swallowed my tongue. So it was, it was quite um, a horrific crash. And uh, yeah. you know, and yeah, that was. Um, I was a long time injured for that. Uh, Brian Simpson uh, fixed me a lot, but he couldn't fix uh, all the the bad bits, if you know what I mean. So I had to wait till they were all back to back to normal. Tio, what keeps you going during an injury like that? And I mean, was there any point that you thought maybe you'd call it a day, or what was it that kept you going, determined to come back? You know, after such a break. Yeah, there's many addictions, but I think speedway is an addiction. Um, you know, uh, to to ride so fast with no brakes, uh, and and be in such a yeah. Well, speedway is a big family, if you know what I mean. So it, it, you keep um, keep in touch with people. Uh, um, but the, the addiction is just to go fast with no brakes. That's that's my addiction, really. Okay. Talking about family, we've got some messages here. Leanne Hutchinson says hello. Um, Alex Harkis is watching. And Scotty Godwood asks, um, what's your favourite race that you've been involved in, Teal? Uh, well, I think I have a few favourite races, and that's uh, with, with Greasy and with... Uh, Shane Parker, I think uh, they they were they were a few. Or uh, yeah. Greasy, Greasy was chasing me on the infield because he didn't like I overtook him. You know, just <laughs> things like that, and it stays. And then we, you know, after he stopped, and they, I think his son is riding a little, little bit. But uh, we we speak normal when we see each other. You know, just uh, uh, when you're on a bike is different, if you know what I mean. So uh, you, you're all enemies, really, if, especially if it's opposite and if it's a local derby. Do you, do you think there's a bit of that taken out of the sport now, Teo? That we spoke with Liam mentioned about it being more professional now than it, it, it was back then. You had the characters. I mean, we, all, we we spoke when Rory was on about um, Wayne Carter having a punch up on the on the track and all that sort of stuff. Do you think that kind of thing? I mean, we watched one of the MTV rewinds and Kevin Doolan is up at the referee's box now. He's not being particularly aggressive because it's not Kevin's nature, but yeah. he's gesturing with the ref. Come on. You don't see that much anymore. Do you think that's been taken out of the sport? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think uh, when they're throwing with uh, with fines now, it, you know the riders also think because um, you don't earn as much as what you used to do with speedway. So that's also a big uh, big thing. And if 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 you know uh, 
if you have a, a bit of a conversation with a referee, it costs you 250 quid straight away. You know, so yeah. What what do you do really? You, you send you send the boss down. You know the wife. The wife. Goes, <laughs> <you know? laughs> we need to get one of these meetings with Willie Dishington and a few of the riders there. <laughs> yeah, you know well, I, I, you know, I had a, had a few. I thought, you know, the Scottish referees will be in our favourites, but sometimes they're not. <laughs> and that's all I say about them. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, John. Tio's just given me an idea. We should do a speedway wives. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I hate yeah. the sport. I hate him. I hate him. You know, yeah. I'm very open, I think. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I think um, <laughs> that's what I say, Kerry, uh, when we go to Scunthorpe or whatever with the boys. Um, you know, she, she travels four hours there, four hours back. And she's not watching anything because she stands behind the porta cabin to shout. You know, just <laughs> she, she doesn't like uh, the same with me. But now with the boys, is even worse. <laughs> it's tough to watch someone that you give a I don't know if the, I don't know if the wife is listening, but sorry to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, she'll be listening, mate. They always are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, the, the years after the title win, then you, you spend at Edinburgh. The team goes through some changes and things like that. What were the years? Because after that, then um, let's do some team changes. What were the years after the league win like? Um, I think uh, definitely when we won the league in, in 2003, um, 2004 was a, a pressure year really because you wanted to defend your title. Uh, you know, and it, it, it went all good. And I, I, you know, I, I've not really had a season what what's been really bad. Um, you know, but. Um, you cannot win all the time, and that's um, you know, in a fan point of view, is is really hard to understand. Sometimes you know you have good days, you have bad days, um, especially on the bikes. If you have machinery problem, um, you know uh, that's also um, uh, plays a role. Uh, but I think uh, 2005, 2006, I really had the 2006. I had a really good year at the Monarchs um, for me. Uh, personally, uh, personally, because um, that was, I was the, I, I was wearing the number one race jacket, and um, you know I was scoring home and away very good points, and um, yeah, definitely that that's a, a year I will never forget really. And uh, Ace was born, Ace was born that same year, so um, yeah, definitely that was uh, a year to to remember. You mentioned that. Uh, I'm just going to say, did you feel at home in Scotland right from the start, Theo? Yeah, or else I wouldn't be living there anymore. <laughs> you know, so no, definitely um, Scotland is just the, the, the most beautiful country in the world, I would say. Um, you know, uh, people are nice. Uh, they're always welcome. You, uh, see, if you go over the border, it's different. You know, but um, yeah, def definitely uh, Scotland is a, is, a, is a place for me, yes. I'll take you to parts of Falkirk that will soon change your opinion, Teo. Um, <laughs> so you mentioned earlier on that you, you, you said, you obviously you said I'm racing at number one, but you mentioned an awkward number earlier on. You say you're racing at an awkward number. Yeah. Now, you think, you put the race track on, you head to the track and you race. Now, it obviously isn't as simple as that. What would you consider then as an awkward number? Uh, number two, definitely. You know, uh, number two is always uh, the guinea pig in the team. Really, uh, it's, it's yeah, it's 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 hard. Uh, you're always against the heat leaders. You have you have the heat eight, of course, and and you're expect to win that. Um, it's yeah, it it, it is, uh, and you have you know by heat ten you could be finished if you if you if you if you don't score enough for heat fifteen, then you know your night is finished at heat ten, and there. Um, I wouldn't say quick races, but you have heat one and then heat six, if you know what I mean. So you, yeah, the track is completely, yeah, yeah. So that the the track is completely changed. Uh, um, so it's it's uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a hard number to race on. Uh, and, yeah, and that's, I remember uh, that's an awful... racing at number two for a long time, and the number of times you you would be go heat one and then they'd go nah, tracks no fit, guys. We're way up the road. And you've yeah. been covered head to toe, you'd have a bike to wash, and yeah. you know, you've not made any money. So, no, uh, and then yeah. heat 10, like you say, bikes on the van by heat 12 if you've only scored maybe four or five or whatever, and, yeah. the, the, and the meeting's done. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, but uh, you know, weather, weather does, does play a role in Speedway, but um, 
as you know, I, I, I'm up for anything, uh, even if it's wet, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think I have, I have really good races when it's, it's wet at Armadale as well, actually. Um, you know, if you're a racer, you race tenure track. That's how I see it. I noticed um, Josh Pickering's watching with us um, as well. So, hello, Josh. And uh, unfortunately, it looks like we certainly won't see you this year. Um, but it's good to see that you're still um, watching with us here. Um, Stuart Wilson asks, Theo, um, how is Speedway in Holland? There have been one or two Dutch riders in the UK in the past. Oh, God, I didn't read this through. Like Henny Cruiser. <laughs> Henny and Cruiser Rudy Mutz. And Rudy uh, Mutz, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, So how, how is Speedway in Holland then? Uh, you know, there's there's pretty much uh, only one track in Holland at the moment uh, where, where they where they race, and it's not really a speedway track. It's uh, it's an old ice of it's an ice skating track, and they they put uh, they have shale underneath it, and that's where they ride uh, one once or twice a year. Um, so speedway is really not not uh, not in Holland. It's more a uh, grass track, what the the potato fields we call it here. That's what they race on here. Um, there's, there's not much uh, 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 talent, I would say, what comes out of Holland. Um, also, for the youngsters now, there's not, there's nothing coming through, if you know what I mean. So, uh, it's, it's, it's not, uh, yeah, how do you say, uh, it's not the most popular place to be a speedway rider, I would say. But, um, do, you think, do you think that's hard then, too? Because, you know, you, you're obviously, having done the sport, you invest more time and effort than most people would um, into encouraging your sons to take up the sport. It's not an easy yeah. sport to get into. Um, if you, you know, you think, oh, I'm a decent, a bit of, I've done a bit of um, motocross or something like that, I want to give this speedway a go. It's not yeah. maybe as an invite the sport as perhaps it should, to let people have a go. Uh, I think... Um these these uh, uh, days they do for practices when they uh, I think uh, Northside used to have a higher day uh, you can get bikes you can hire a bike and, and let it ride but they didn't have the people who would say oh this is how you ride you know yeah. uh, that's that's the thing um, everybody thinks as well with, with if, if you have a dad who used to race then the son should race anyway because he's there all the time if you know what I mean but it, you know they need to learn too it, it's not as easy as, as what everybody um, if you sit on the sideline it's always easy if you know what I mean but um, yeah racing is, is just um, a unique thing I think uh, there's there's many many motocrossers who come now to Speedway and they they get the grips and they go really good uh, but there's also some motocrosses who, who try to do it and it's it's not for them if you know what I mean so it's it, yeah it's um it's a selected game i would say they you know in poland they open a, a case and they have 20 riders but um, not every country has that anymore Theo, you mentioned the grass track there you were the european grass track champion in 2004 and seven well what would you say is the difference between racing speedway and racing grass track? um i think a good speedway rider can ride any any bike i think um you know um you, you definitely uh, a good speedway rider can race speed uh, speedway and long track i would say but a good grass track rider it's hard to go to speedway because speedway is more technique if you know what i mean so you, you go pretty much sideways all the time uh long track is 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 a bit more yeah it's you don't you don't turn as hard as as on the on the speedway so um yeah it, it's hard it's hard to to go from speedway to long track but from long track to speedway is um is even harder i think and i think and by doing all three i take it that gives you a great advantage yeah, definitely. Yeah, because uh, I used to ride it at, at Armadale then. Um, it, you know, it's a very small track for speedway. And um, uh, and then if you in the weekends, I was racing a uh, thousand meter trotting tracks. You know, so it, it yeah, it's a big it's a big change. But um, I think if you if you're motor minded, you 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 can you can do that. What kind of speed to be talking on the long track? Oh, hello. <laughs> 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 what kind of, uh, what kind of speed are we talking on the on the long track? 
then is, um, is it significantly we, different to, to, to Speedway? Definitely. Uh, uh, last weekend uh, we topped uh, 115 miles an hour on the straight, so um, that was um, that was very fast, you know. Um, and um, you have that's on a thousand meter track, and if you go to uh, say a, a five six hundred meter track, they call it grass tracks, but uh, they also use them for the GPS. Uh, you, you're talking about uh, uh, close close to well, 90 to 100 all the time, if you know what I mean. So. It is um, it is a little bit faster than Speedway, but uh, I think Speedway is also more. Um, it feels faster because it's a smaller track, if you know what I mean. Mm. So if I you're remember. on the long track, you you have more space. You have uh, you only have five riders on the on the start now. But if uh, if you have an international uh, in the UK or 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 in Germany, you have six or eight on the on the start. You know, it's, it's yeah. It's, then it, then it, then you think, oh, I need to make a good start because you don't want to be involved in them. Yeah, well, I was just about to say. I remember reading Sammy Malenko's book, and I'm sure it was during long track that he had this big accident yeah. um, years and years ago. The the the, 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 the risks must be or obviously are hugely uh, yeah. if you're doing that kind of speed. Um, yeah. I know there's, the tracks are bigger and there's more space and things like that, but is there, is there a real risk difference between the two or does it not feel any different to you? It's just another discipline. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, by age growing uh, in, the, in this sport, I think if it, if it gets really tough now, then um, you think twice before you dive in little gaps, if you know what I mean. But um, you, you're on the way to lap to, to go past them. But uh, um, I can see it in, in in my son. If there is a gap now, he'll 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 push through, you know. So that's how I probably was when I was his age. Um, but uh, at the moment, uh, in my age now, my bones don't heal as quick as his. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to we've got to say um, hello to someone who's been messaging in to you. And I, I'll be honest, I'm hoping Liam was going to do it because again, yeah. I don't want to get the pronun pronunciation. Is, is that is that Lincoln? Le Is that Lena 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 She's been saying hello, and the fact that you're back in Holland, she loves that. Um, yeah. I'm trying to see what else she's. She got love for carrying the kids as well. So, yeah. yeah. Um, David Harley has also said your ability as a motorcyclist is brilliant, especially switching from Armadale. Great to see you competing at such a high level successfully. What would be the best long track event to go to? So as a spectator, we want yeah. to go and see some long track speedway. Give us the best. Uh, well, you have normally, uh, if, if, uh, if the virus wasn't here, you would have had a few very good ones. Uh, but it depends if if they wanna if they wanna have a close racing track. I would I would say France. Uh, they have uh, ten ten to fifteen thousand spectators, uh, and it's a big show if you know what I mean. And it's very fast and close racing uh, for a GP uh, long track. Yes. Get the passport out, then, Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart Wilson asks, um, Theo, is there a possibility of Team Piper representing Holland at the Speedway of Nations? Um, I've been asking uh, a few years now to ride uh, the Speedway of Nations because that's one thing I've never done yet. Um, I've done pretty much every other championship what there is. Uh, and I would like to have our federation to do the Speedway of Nations, but they have not enough riders, they say. Um, um, you know, uh, not a, there is hopefully coming something through, uh, maybe uh, because there's some new guys uh, trying it out now uh, in Holland, but uh, I don't see that happening yet. But um, maybe if I ever get a, a partner who can, who can race with me in the Speedway Nations and comes on a Dodge license, then uh, maybe that's possible. You said earlier that Speedway is an addiction. And, and you've reminded us a couple of times that you're 40. Um, what keeps your passion going as you get older? What keeps your passion for the sport? What keeps the addiction alive? Yeah, I think I think uh, the the speed and the no breaks um, definitely. You know, it's it, it's a thrill. Uh, it's a thrill you you cannot find anywhere else. Um, I tried many other racing. I did road racing. It, it doesn't give you the thrill uh, because you can still break going into the turns. You know, but um, with Speedway it doesn't, and uh, long track is the same. So um, 
yeah, that's that's uh, that's kind of. And I think uh, you feel free. You forget anything what happens around you if you're on the bike. And you still get that same buzz that you got back when you were yes. 20, 22. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Go back to your to your racing uh, career, Teal. You joined um, Glasgow in 2011, but then um, we've all got girlfriends that we don't want to talk about. You go back to um, uh, the Monarchs 2013 and you become Force Champions. What was it like racing again with the Monarchs at that time? Um, yeah, I definitely, you know, it's, it's, it's um, you know, for me as a team, as a team, you know, I know there's the rivalness with with Edinburgh, Glasgow, but, you know, you all, yous all get on with each other, so there isn't any rival, it's just a local derby, if you know what I mean. So, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, yeah, when, I, when, I, when we came back uh, in 2011, uh, we, had a, we had a good season there too, you know, um, and it uh, when we're back at the Monarchs, uh, you know, you continue that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, um, racing, racing the, the guys, the teams, um, and, and the people around you, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a big uh, involvement if you, if you have uh, the people standing behind you and not shouting, you, oh, you're shite, you can go away, you know, then that's, uh, yeah, that, that, that stakes in a rider's head, if you know what I mean. And how, how big is Paul? Uh, could you hear that and sense that then when you're racing? If, if things aren't going well, you know, if the fans are giving you a hard time, I, I, I guess you don't go onto these message boards and things like that because that would, that would drive anyone insane um, if they went and read that. But can you feel and sense that from the fans? Well, uh, yeah, definitely. You know, um, um, I think, uh, well, if you go back to the, the earlier stage in at uh, the Monarchs, uh, you had like uh, if they named the Greaves, uh, for example, you know you had the biggest boo you can get, you know. <laughs> but the, the thing is that fires the rider up, and the fans don't understand that maybe. But the, the rider thinks, oh, I need to do well now because you know they hate it, you know, and that's that's what they like to do. And uh, uh, I, I I think I'm the only one who doesn't get boos anywhere at the moment. So I'm quite happy with that. I get a cheer at either either Scottish <laughs> club I go to. <laughs> Here, that's all we'll to do when he comes back. We'll need to boo him, and then we'll get a few points. <laughs> <Yes, they will. laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Dave Harley um, has an answer for you, a suggestion for you too. He says, if you can hang on. You could wait for Ace, and then it could be Ace and Teal for the Holland League of Nations team. Yeah, um, I might be. Uh, well, I don't know. That's that's still a long time to come. I think. Um, um, I think uh, when um, when I can I can do another year in the speedway, uh, or maybe two, and then uh, I might need to hang up my jacket. Are you seriously yeah. thinking about that, Teal? You thinking you've got um, a couple of years left? I don't. I, I don't know. I, I'll still do a little bit of long track because I think I can uh, be a little bit older uh, doing this because you have a, a German rider who's sixty years old and still rides a GP. So um, yeah, I, hopefully, yeah, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, definitely. Um, I think if um, if I can do another year or two in the UK Speedway, uh, then I, I would be very happy if I could fulfil them. If you know what I mean, and then. Uh, um, all my injuries are playing up uh, normally in the in the you know in the winter time uh, you know when you're not racing and um, you know uh, I, when I'm 80 I hope I can still walk as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? It's a good time then to bring in, in, in your boys. Um, and you've obviously taken a lot of time bring these guys through, let them have the opportunity to race speedway. Um, yeah. You know how. Was that something that was always, you know, with the kids running around with you racing? I take it that wasn't, come on, boys, have a go. It was more that, that we want a go. Yeah, well, uh, I think um, it was, uh, yeah, the boys definitely wanted to have a bike. Uh, you know, uh, when they were little, they were always sitting on my bikes. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Ace was uh, three. He got a PW50 on his, on his birthday. And uh, I think the year before, he got a helmet and he wore it nearly the whole season. So uh, he went. He went in the bath with it. He went to bed with it. You know. Um, uh, 
and then we kind of thought, you know what, he might he might be a racer if you know what I mean. So, uh, <laughs> and then it, it took a while. Uh, it took a while. He, um, he uh, yeah, yeah, he, he absolutely enjoyed and loves it. And um, you know, everything is 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 bikes um, bikes for him. Uh, everything around him is is not an interest if you know what I mean. So. Um, uh, it, he is uh, he is very uh, talented um, in in what he's doing, and uh, I think uh, if he uh, if he keeps listening to the the main man, you know, <laughs> me, then then uh, then he might he might even go further than what I ever did. Uh, it, as, a, as his dad, how nerve wracking is it for you to watch him race? Well, I kind of, I kind of know know how uh, how Kerry feels when uh, I'm racing and the kids are racing. You know, uh, my heart pumping twice as fast as well when he's racing. Um, but um, I'm trying to keep busy as a, as his mechanic then, or or for both with Steen as well, um, because he's coming on too. Um, it, yeah, it, it is very nerve wracking, and um, I know what can happen uh, because mm-hmm. I've been in these situations before. You know. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. Dang- it's a dangerous sport. So, uh, but uh, he's he's uh, he had his, his few up and downs, and uh, he knows if he falls off, it hurts. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Now, Gary Dixon's also asking um, that your lads have been getting a fair bit of track time at Almadale in 2019. How do you feel they're progressing, and what are your plans for them? Well, my uh, my sons are. Um, well, Steen is kind of he lo- he loves the small tracks, but Ace is more. Um, he's more a big track rider. He loves the big tracks. Um, so and uh, that's why I've taken him to Armadale all the time and to Northside on a small track, so he can master them first. Um, I think how smaller the track is, how more he needs to, you know, train train to keep the bike uh, going fast around the corner. And uh, how how big of the track, you know, how more lazy you kind of can ride, if you know what I mean. So he is, um, yeah, definitely I'm a small track uh, person to, to learn and then the big tracks will come after. Do you think that's a, a kind yeah. of thing in, in, in all the speedway then? Do you think if you can master the small tracks, the big tracks take care of themselves? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, i um, that was my uh, luck, I think, uh, when I got uh, signed by the Monarchs. Um, you know, that was one of, one of the smallest ones in the league. Um, and I learned to master that. And then, you know, I, I moved on to a bigger track and uh, I, I mastered them in the end uh, as well. You know, so you can you can kind of benefit for it. But when you come back to the small track, then it's, it's quite hard. Um, you know, if you only visit them once or twice a year, then it's quite hard for for some people to, to to adapt to it, especially engine engine setups and mm. all that kind of stuff. So um, it is quite hard to 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 switch over, if you know what I mean. But there's there's plenty of riders who can do that, and um, they are, in my eyes, the better riders. Christopher Black asks: Is there plans for the boys to get into the Devils um, in the future? They've had some pretty impressive results in the Scuntop series when they race. So, would you like to see them racing in a Devils race jacket? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, um, the the boys uh, Ace has has his European final at the end of August. Uh, after after that, he goes to the two fifties. Um, so he'll he'll make a massive step from a one two five to a two fifty. Uh, and I think he'll he'll in my eyes, I think he will ride it a year, and then he'll be on the five hundred. So. Um, He'll uh, he'll be pretty close to, to to come to be a devil then. And Derek, the bus driver, I'm sure you remember Derek. Derek says, yeah, Derek. Uh, "Do Ace and Steen still beat you like they used to on the moped mopeds when you raced in the yard?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Derek was always the best. Uh, yeah, I always had my workshops at Derek's, and uh, you know uh, we had a good banter down there and we had like little mopeds and he let us race in the field so and the kids as well so uh, we always had good fun uh, down at the yard there thanks derek and, and did you let them win to you did you let the kids win no i didn't let them win they just they, they just beat me that's it that's it i leave that to you yeah, tough love yeah. mate tough love yeah 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 <laughs> um we've also got to say there's a couple other um, people from your neck of the woods, Theo, that are, uh, that are messaging in. We've got Eric, I'm going to say Luik, but I know it's wrong. Um, Luik. Eric Luik. That's Eric Luik, he's saying, how you doing? 
That's Lineker's man. Oh, right, okay, because Tanya Lewick as well, saying you're the best. That's, that's the daughter. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff. So we've got, um, we're kind of coming towards the end of our, of our hour, um, Teo, as well. Um, is there anyone that you, through your time at Edinburgh, would like to thank or, or, or anyone that you say it was a real help during your time? Edinburgh. Yeah, I would like to thank thank all of the the old school, you know, uh, every everyone who was uh, supporting us, uh, you know, at Edinburgh Monarchs, and uh, still do, and and especially Derek Weber. Um, Derek Weber has always been uh, good to us and a, a good friend and a, and a good sponsor as well, and uh, and uh, Derek and Sila, of course, uh, and. You know, so um, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of time we spend with them. Um, I always helped them if they needed something painted. Uh, I was there for them, and uh, if I needed something, they were there for me. So uh, yeah, definitely, I'm uh, I'm a hundred percent. You know, they're the best people ever. So absolutely. And you you're going racing this weekend? You were saying too. Yes, I have uh, my European final uh, uh, in um, in Tayac in France. Um, in the south of France, so we were we were planning to probably head down uh, Monday Monday night. Probably uh, it's a fourteen hour journey for us, um, and hopefully uh, climatize a little bit because uh, I think it's going to be like 30, 35 degrees there. So um, we have only uh, twenty eight here, so that's not not enough to climatize yet. Was, so um, chucking it down here about an hour ago. I'm so sure everybody wishes you all the best for that. Yeah, oh, thank you. racing. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, and when uh, when we do get racing, hopefully we'll be back next year um, with the Monarchs too. We look forward to seeing you there. We look forward Absolutely. to seeing your boys there, and we'd love to yeah. see you up in the tower and catch up with you. Um, Absolutely. When you're back next year. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Well, right, it's been great. Listen, we'll be back on Friday um, with another EM TV Rewind. And we'll be back next Sunday as well um, with our Sunday lunch. So from myself, Teo, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you as all to do this.